of Bethel Temple Cathedral. I'm Evangelist Lady Michelle Dawson, the pastor of Bethel Temple Cathedral. 2016-17 and the theme is Building a Spiritual House unto the Lord according to His plan. Taken from Psalms 127 verse 1, Matthew chapter 7, 24 and 25, and 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 5 and 9. Unless the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain, who built it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Psalms 127 verse 1. The first message of our annual theme lays the foundation for building a spiritual house unto the Lord. This is a two-part sermon series titled, First Things First, delivered by our founder and chief servant, Bishop Lee Donaldson, Sr. <laughs>
to stand to your feet for a moment. Heavenly Father, God, we ask even right now, God, that you'd speak to our hearts. Send us a rhema word, a life-changing word, a word that will strengthen us in our walk so that we will live our lives pleasing in your sight and be the light of the world in that city on a hill that can't be hid. We give you all the glory and all the praise, knowing, God, that it's not by our power or might, but by your spirit. And so, God, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our message today is being taken from Matthew, the sixth chapter. Verses 25 through 34. Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter, beginning with the 25th verse. It is a very familiar passage here at Bethel Temple Cathedral. Just a few weeks ago, I spoke about uh, from this same context. Of course, I thank God for the spirit of God because um, just this morning, God spoke to me to me and said, I want you to go right back there again. And certainly I thank God for his spirit that leads us into all truths. Let's begin reading with the 25th verse through the 34th verse. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not life more than meat? and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they do not, for they sow not, neither do they weep, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet, I say unto you, that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you O ye of little faith. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or whether with shall we be clothed? For all of these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all of these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And the title of our message today is once and again, First Things First. Say that with me. First things first. You may be seated. Jesus presented evidence that worry is irrelevant for it fails to believe that God is in control. That the God who gave us life is sustaining it. Worry is irrelevant because it does not change things nor help us cope with problems. Worry also is irresponsible. It burns up energy that should be used constructively to address the problem. Jesus used the birds of the air to illustrate, illustrate freedom from anxiety. The lilies of the field to illustrate freedom from status seeking and the grass of the field to illustrate our need to assess 
priorities. He admonishes us in verse 27 saying that worry cannot add anything to our life, yet it may limit it. A reporter covering a coal mine disaster wrote a story that began, God looked at the grief today in this little West Virginia mining town and he wept. The city editor emailed back and said, forget the mine cave-in, interview God. Obviously, getting to know God in a personal way should be our greatest priority in life. If we plan on spending eternity with him, then it seems like a good idea to get acquainted with him now. <laughs> After all the disasters in, in our world, it may be later than we think. Time ain't long as it has been. We soon may meet him face to face. Understanding how quickly life goes by and how long eternity is should teach us how to have the right priorities. We are in a sense here today, gone tomorrow, James 4, 14. We must have our priorities right in order to take full advantage of life. What are your priorities? What are your priorities for any given day? The thrust of Jesus' lesson is found in verse 33, our key verse. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness yes. and all things will be added to you. Yes. Seek first reveals Jesus' concern for the priorities of our life. Yes, sir. He commands that our first priority be his kingdom Amen. and his righteousness. Oh, that's right. That's right. It is fairly easy to be a good Christian at church, you know. It's, uh, it's more difficult at places such as home or at the marketplace where we earn our wages. Yes. God wants us to be Christians everywhere. Yes, and good Christians yes. at that. It isn't easy, but he gives us the strength that we need if only we will accept what he teaches. That's right. Now let's walk through Jesus' teachings today by a six point outline. The first being our occupation or focus. This teaching defines three issues in life. Shelter, clothing, and food. These things loom large in, a, in importance. We spend at least half of our waking hours with involvement in these things. Probably more concern invested in these than in anything else. Therefore, we are prone to focus on them just like lost people do. Those who personally know God however, and understand his loving kindness and faithfulness yes. should not live with the same anxiety as lost folk. Mm -hmm. Now the second point is our options or choices. Jesus indicates that there are two priority options or directions on which we can focus our life. Amen. We can go after and be occupied with things as our goal, or we can seek first the kingdom and righteousness of God as our goal. Right. Generally, we live life our way. Amen. We give ourselves first priority in our life. Amen. As a result, we go after the material things that loom large in our lives. Amen. We give small attention to spiritual things of life. Amen. We expect that somehow spiritual things will take care 
of themselves. Next, the third point is our objectives or goals. Like the lost world, we can go after these other things. We can choose to place the priority for our energies and efforts into providing for ourselves. We can make our primary concern the physical necessities of life, such as housing, food, and clothing. If we make these things the goal for our life, they will move us in the direction of material and earthly. Yes. Or we can go after God's kingdom and righteousness. Mm -hmm. These are the Christian's priority or priorities. A divine priority composed of two parts. God's kingdom and God's righteousness. Mm -hmm. See, kingdom is that which recognizes and promotes God's rule and reign. To seek first God's kingdom is to seek first his rule, his will, and his authority. Seeking God's kingdom is losing ourselves in obedience to the Lord. To the extent that we can, to seek first God's kingdom is to pour out our lives into the eternal work of our Heavenly Father. See Acts 20, verse 24. Second, we are to seek his righteousness. Righteousness is that which is in accord with God's character and Christ-likeness. Instead of longing after the things of this world, we are hungry and thirsty for the things of the world to come which are characterized above all else by personal righteousness or obedience to God. Colossians 3, verses 2 and 3. It is to have Jesus hmm, own truth, love, and righteousness manifested in our lives yes. and to have peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Romans 14, 17. To seek righteousness is to seek to win people into God's kingdom. Yeah. That they might be saved and God might be glorified. Mm -hmm. Peter says, since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought we be? in holy conduct and godliness, looking for the hastening of the coming of the day of God. 2 Peter 3 and 11. To summarize, seek first God instead of things, the spiritual as opposed to the material, the eternal instead of the earthly. Now, our fourth point is our order or priorities. Let me mention here what the verse does not teach. It does not teach that having or pursuing things is wrong. It is not wrong to go after other things. We do not need to spend all of our time or energy in spiritual pursuits. There is a difference between concern and focus, obsession or anxiety, between our first priority and our responsibility. Jesus said, seek first. Not let it be the one and only thing you seek or go after. God expects us to work and live while centering our lives on him and his kingdom as we work and live. What Jesus is teaching here is to clearly establish priority in our life. Let your first priority be following Christ. Jesus said, focus your attention and hopes on the things of the Lord. If you are going to be consumed with anything, be consumed with the kingdom. Amen. Now the fifth point, and I'm almost finished, is our obtaining. 
Apparently there are two ways of getting things. You can make them the object of life and struggling for them like the world does, or you can have them added unto you. Our caring, protective, good God will always add what we need to our life. The passage calls us to seek first the kingdom and leave the secondary matters to his providential care. If God's priority becomes our priority, he will take care of our needs. This daily supply is a promise. Notice that it is a conditional promise. First, we seek the kingdom and then everything else will fall into place. Rather than being like the pagans or the Gentiles who are concerned about physical needs, rather than seeking and worrying about food and shelter and clothing like unbelievers do, Jesus says, focus your attention and hopes on the things of the Lord and he will take care of all of your needs. The Lord's disciples should be concerned about the things of God his kingdom and his righteousness, then all of these needs will be supplied in God's timing. This is the life of daily faith. Now the last point, number six, is our operation or our <coughs> daily life. The word is for the spiritually wise. We must not expect God's specific blessings where he is not first in our lives. If the first priority in your life is not God's kingdom and righteousness, it may explain some, some unproductive living and giving. This concentration on doing God's will is the positive answer to worry. Anxiety is resolved by a lifestyle of seeking God's kingdom and righteousness first each day. Don't expect him to spiritually or eternally bless you if you are not going to put him first. It means that decisions in life must be weighed. What am I putting first? Your daily life and decisions must give priority to God's kingdom and righteousness. We must give God sovereignty over our daily lives. This is where the real issue lies. Will we walk or live by faith in Christ or will we walk by the sight and wisdom of natural man? Do you want to follow Jesus as Lord? Or do you only want comfort, protection, and fire insurance? In conclusion, two simple rules should govern life. Set your eyes on the things that advance God's kingdom and contribute to the establishment of his righteousness and go after them. Allow the Heavenly Father to keep his promises concerning the rest of life and seek first the kingdom and everything else will fall into place. Amen. That is God's promise. Yes. You know, I, 15 years ago, God dealt with me about this particular verse. I even wrote a little booklet about it called First Things First. And, and, and when he really communed with me about this verse, it, it, it explained why my life had been such a blessing up to that point. And I realized that I had this evidence that God's word was true because if you put him first, if you put his will in your life first, if you put the kingdom of God in, his, in your life first, if you strive to live right, and, and even when you can't confess before God and, and ask for his, his help and his assistance, he, he shows up in your life and fixes you and gives you the victory. 
And so I went to look and I said, God, I said, this is the reason why I've been blessed all of my life. I've always had my own house and uh, I, I mean house, I mean with a drive-in garage and a fenced in backyard for the children to play in. And it never really caught, I never went looking for it. It came looking for me. And so I'm a living witness that if you first seek God, even when I met Lady Michelle, when I first met her, I, my house was paid for it, had been just given to me. The, 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 the real estate broker decided, say, I, I'm not going to take any more payments from you. I'm just going to give you this house because you are serving the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so today I want to ask you, how about you? What is the first priority of your day and of your life? Would you consider seeking first the kingdom of Christ and his righteousness? I want to encourage you to do that today and every day. And if you sense a rededication of even of your life today, I want to encourage you to come Lay it on the altar. Tell God about it. And if you ask him, if you need help, he'll help you. Amen. I know he will. But if you first see God and his righteousness, all things, what does all exclude? All things. He said, would be added. He didn't say you would have to go find it. It would find you. Mm -hmm. Several, uh, about a month or so ago, I shared with you all how one day we were home and, and Lady Michelle asked me, she said, honey, you think we can buy a new crock pot or something or, or, or rotisserie? And when we moved up here, uh, we God required that we leave everything that we own basically back there. And, you know, Lady Michelle had a lot of nice appliances because, you know, as a, as a man that loves his wife, I like her to have the stuff she likes. And then she loves to cook and she loves to feed me. And so, but we couldn't bring that stuff up here. God told her. And by the time we were getting ready to go back to get it, people had broken our home and, and, and destroyed the things that we own. And so she asked me about that. And I told her, I said, well, honey, I said, I need you to wait right now. We really can't afford it. I said, but, you know, maybe next month. And then I just went on out the door there to go take care of some church business. Mm -hmm. And on the way up the street, I passed a new rotisserie sitting on the curb and just sat there for somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, 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 you know, we, we lost multi appliances when we moved here. And, it, and that was what was so amazing. Not only was there a, a new rotisserie waiting on her, there was a, a, a new a deep fryer. Uh, oh, come on, Jesus. Yeah, come on. Yeah. We had lost a, she had a deep fryer back there in Memphis. And she had her own, she had two rotisseries. And, and, and here it is, the stuff was sitting on the curb, sister waiting on me, said, here it is, I'm adding. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm adding it. Uh, hallelujah. Because you seek me and my righteousness. And, and of course, Michelle, she did. She didn't do like most women do. Well, I just want I, If you ain't going to get it. No, she said, all right. Hmm. Hallelujah. And God added. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Amen.